The wind today here in Baltimore, about six, seven miles an hour. It's not going to get much warmer than 62. There is a chance of rain as the game goes on. And Kevin Stefanski has his team coming in with a record of two and four, one and one on the road. But three straight losses is tough. Well, it is, it is tough when you're dealing with three straight losses. And, and of the four losses, three of them have been by three points or less. So they're right there. But you have to understand with this division being so clumped together, a win here by the Browns today, as strange as it may be, the win here today puts them in the driver's seat of this division. Ernest Johnson is back to get the kickoff from Tucker. They've had Chester Rogers back there, but he was out of practice squad elevations. So Johnson is back there. It's in the end zone and a touchback to the 25, which brings us to quarterback Jacoby Brissett. Two touchdown passes, four interceptions over this three-game streak. Yeah, and, and talking to Jacoby yesterday, he realizes he didn't play well enough. He was upset with his performance a week ago against New England. His lowest completion percentage, under 50%. He turned the ball over. He just wasn't as sharp as he wanted to be. He made it a point after the game to address the team and get them dialed in for this week. Four in the secondary. It's first and ten. Brissett and Chubb. Locked in there by Froholt, and he'll chug his way near the 30-yard line with a burst of five. The three-time Pro Bowler getting five for the Browns on first and ten. The offensive line, I mentioned Froholt. Right guard Wyatt Teller is injured and out. Froholt will take his place. And that'll be one to watch today. The number one rusher in the league is Nick Chubb off a season-low 56 yards last week. Yeah, and they need to get Chubb involved. We saw last week they started off the game with a couple of play action passes, trying to break some trends. This time, hey, do what we do best, and that's run the football. Second down and five. Blocked by Wills, off to Chubb, blocked by Froholt, into the secondary. Breaking tackles, slipped right by Campbell, finally taken down by Josh Bynes. Oh, he's slippery in a 13 yard catch and run out to the 43 and a first down for Cleveland. Well, it's going to be a play fake coming this way and then sneaking out to the backside just set up as a screen but watch as the as he gets out and uh, gets out in space now all of a sudden with the cutback and this is what he's so good at doing you have to wrap him up and get him down his legs are so strong he breaks through those tackles only his eighth reception of the season first and ten job Trying to get a block out there, and he did from Petonio, and then Campbell got him on a gain of a yard out to the 45-yard line. The Baltimore defense comes in. Number seven against the run. We'll be watching that number all game long. Well, and that's really what they need to focus in on. The, the, the Ravens have had a great deal of success stopping Nick Chubb and the Browns' running attack. If you look at the numbers over the years, what they've been able to do. But you have to remember, last time these two teams played, Cleveland did get the win. Hunt and Chubb are in second and nine up the middle it goes and they've got the fullback tight end Harrison Bryant with a cradling catch at the 40 14 yard pickup moments ago a 13 yard catch and run by Chubb and the Browns are into Raven territory. Well, and they love to use two tight end sets, the fourth most in the NFL using multiple tight end sets. This time the joke is to to the left. And Brown makes the ball, catches the ball to the right, creating that pressure in the middle of that defense. You've got to pick one. That time they focused on Njoku, left Brown open. Now two running backs are receivers on a first and ten. They go underneath, and this is caught by Njoku. You talked about him moments ago. Carries a defender on his back, Chuck Clark, inside the 20, down to the 18 of the Ravens on a pickup of 22. So through the air, 13, 14, and 22 right there by the quarterback Jacoby Brissett. Well, I know I said Brown just a second ago. It was Bryant that had that last catch. And then this time going to Njoku, utilizing him, finding that space in the zone, not trying to do too much. Jacoby Brissett with a quick decision and an accurate throw. Ravens have not allowed a first quarter touchdown this season. It's Chubb on first and 10, blocked by Wills. Inside, then jumping on him is Owe. Off the line to the 16 and a gain of three. And Kevin, that's a perfect example of it. Looks like they have him stopped for either a loss or no gain, and yet he's able to still make it into a three-yard gain. That the, the strength of his lower body, as you see the numbers against 
the Ravens, the strength of his lower body is, is, is what he's so strong with. And then also the stiff arm. We haven't seen that yet, but he gets to uh, utilizing that stiff arm will come into play today as well. Second down and seven. Opening drive of the game. Brissette. Good time and outside it goes for Donovan Peoples-Jones. Knocked out of bounds on the near side and hit there by Marlon Humphrey on a gain of two and put him about the 13. Well, I like the fact, I know I know they didn't pick up many yards, but I like the fact that Brissett was decisive. A week ago, he wasn't decisive at all. The Ravens showed a bunch of players at the line of scrimmage, not sure if they're going to blitz. He throws the quick throw instead of waiting to see if they bring pressure, which, of course, they dropped out into coverage. But instead of waiting to see, go ahead, take the quick throw, get something positive. And don't put that pressure on yourself. Kareem Hunt, the back, third and five. Brissette guns one down to the eight and caught by Najoku. On him was Patrick Queen, very close to a first down, near the nine. And let's see how they spot that ball. On this opening drive and a good looking one by the Browns. Quick little out route by Najoku, accurate throw. It's going to be close. They haven't signaled it yet. It looks nope. like they're going to be short, and they're keeping the offense on the field. What do you think? I like the call. After after what's going on here, you lost three games in a row. You're on the road. Try and make something happen early. Two tight ends, fourth and one. Prisette, who takes a lot of these himself, on the quarterback sneak. And right now, just the eye test from up here says they get the first at about the eight. Into the teeth of that defense of the Baltimore Ravens. Well, this is something in short yardage situations, whether it's third and short or fourth and short, they like the quarterback sneak. Brissett is very good at it. A week ago, watch as he's going to work to the side. You're just trying to find that open window in the defense. You see how he's Number reading it. Good collapse. As reported, as an receiver. Number 68 is they just were making the announcement that Dunn has come in as an eligible receiver. They like to utilize their offensive linemen as extra tight ends, especially down here near the goal line. Browns are coming off a game where they scored a season low 15 against the Pats. 10th play of the drive, first and goal. Chubb in the backfield. Brown in motion. Chubb blocked by Froholt. Blocking the play by Brown. Grabbed around the waist by Stone and wrestled out of bounds. He is near the one. Hard guy to bring down. Chubb for seven. Second and goal. Watch 72 fro hold. He's the one that pulls around to the outside. He gets out in front of Chubb. He's able to get blocked, but you can't block all three. <laughs> so Chubb, <laughs> Chubb is just working those legs. Fro hold comes back into play and tries getting it going. But excellent job. Athleticism by Fro hold to get out in front of it. And Chubb pushing it towards that end zone. And again, no Wyatt Teller. Left calf strain out for a couple games. Second and goal with the two with Chubb. People Jones in motion. Chubb got it. Touchdown. Just like that. Knifes his way in for two. And the Browns have made an early and distinct statement here in Baltimore. Posick and Froholt are the ones that are going to lead through. You don't see centers pull that often, but watch both of these guys. They're going to come out in space, and that's what allows Chubb to get into the end zone. Excellent athleticism getting around. Posick is the one that finishes it off, and really, he ran into the end zone clean. Great job collapsing it for the right side of that offensive line. Number one in rushing touchdowns in the NFL. Chubb with his eighth. Reset a perfect five of five on the drive, and York with one more. Seven nothing Cleveland. Chubb had a catch and run of 13. Bryant had a catch of 14. Najoku caught one for 22. Nick Chubb, the number one rusher in the NFL, in for six for the Browns. Distinctive drive with Chubb going in on a two-yard touchdown run. He already has six touches in this game. He had 13 the entire game last week against the Patriots. Well, six touches out of just 11 plays. So they, they made a very concerted effort. Listen, we've got to get Nick Chubb involved. We've got to get him involved early. The first three plays went to him. Handoff, screen, handoff. Obviously, it was very effective for the Browns as they went down and scored. Duvernay is back on the kickoff from York. Duvernay, the only player in the NFL to return a kick for a touchdown the first six weeks of the season. It's in the end zone. Touchback to the 25, which brings out 
Lamar Jackson dealing with a hip injury. He's had three touchdown passes, Trent, and four interceptions in the last three games. You know, the former MVP is a threat anytime he has the ball in his hands. That's both with his feet and throwing the ball down the field. They have, they have targeted the tight end quite a bit more than any other team in the NFL. But Jackson looks to come out and be sharp right from the beginning. So the Ravens, who had not allowed a first quarter touchdown this season, do on the first possession today. The running back is Gus Edwards, and he'll take it, and he'll slither his way out to the 29. And Gus Edwards making his season debut, his first game in 645 days. Unbelievable. Stanley is back, as Mel told us. Linderbaum is the rookie. Right side has been blocking well. Rashad Bateman is back today at wide receiver. Well, and, and talking about Gus Edwards, the fact that, you know, the, the, the faithful here in the stadium gave a loud cheer for Gus Edwards because the journey it was to get back on the field, tearing that ACL prior to last season in the preseason, and then taking him this long to get back on the field. It, uh, that's, a, that's a hard journey, and I'm sure it means a lot to him. Second down and six. Edwards again looking for a block. Andrews trying to get it, hit by Delpit and others on a gain of three. Taki Taki was in there, and the ball is out to the 32. What about the defense, which comes in number 23, but number 31 in points allowed? Yeah, they, they've struggled at times this year. We can see 28, who we focused in on there, Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa. He's going to be the guy that's shadowing Lamar Jackson. When they're in man coverage, he's going to be the guy that has to shadow him and go sideline to sideline, trying to keep him from the big plays. It's Gus again. Oh, look at him take it. Over the right side on the hash and to the 44. Chugging ahead. He picks up 12. A Baltimore first down. Gus Edwards with the run. Last year missing all season with a torn ACL. Well, no hesitation about getting him involved quick. The first three plays the Ravens have, they're all three handoffs to Gus Edwards. It's nice to see him churning his legs and of course, the Ravens are excited to have him back. Once they once he got the nod, it was it was quickly decided he was going to start today. Kenyon Drake has now come in. The card back there. They're in the pistol on a first and ten. Hundred nineteen on the ground last week for Drake. And Kenyon takes it up to the 48. A pile brings him down. Delpit, among a couple others, in there making the stop. Newsom, two. Gain of four up to the 48-yard line. Well, and you, and you mentioned the fact that Drake had over 100 yards rushing a week ago on just 10 carries. He's like, what do I have to do to get a start around here? <laughs> but Gus Edwards, you know, coming off of that injury and, and the work he's put in to get back, it was uh, kind of a nice nod to, to Gus to give him the starting the starting job today, but but Drake put together a phenomenal game a week ago for the for the Ravens. Four in the secondary, and it's second down and six. And he's going deep, and he's got his receiver. What a catch made by Duvernay on the rookie Martin Emerson. Deep in Cleveland territory, near the 21, 32-yard strike. Well, Emerson just didn't get enough contact, and then it was just running away from him. It was just a matter of Duvernay. Once he got to the outside, it was a foot race. Emerson not able to keep up with him. Duvernay makes the grab, 19th catch of the season. On a first and ten, Taki Taki goes low and brings down Drake on a gain of a yard inside the 20. And, Kevin, we're going to have to keep our eye on Emerson. Remember a week ago against New England, they yes. were able to take advantage of him. The rookie mm -hmm. struggled against the Patriots. Denzel Ward not playing again today. Greedy Williams coming back off of injury a week ago, and he's more of their nickel guy. So got to keep an eye on Emerson and how he handles things today. Well, they just took out Taki Taki. They just brought in. Greedy Williams, you mentioned Denzel Ward, the pro bowler is out, concussion protocol. A look at Brissett, who was 5 of 5 on his first drive. With a second down and 9. Edwards back in. Drop play, big hole. Edwards into the secondary. Hit first by Delpit. And brought down after a burst of 6 inside the 15.
This is just a draw right here, but I want you to watch the lane, the hole that he's going to have to run through. He doesn't even have any contact until he's a good seven yards upfield. Excellent job by the guys up front. Edwards with the big game. And Awusu Koromoa came in there to slow him up first, then he was finished off. Here's a third and three. So, so far, Edwards, four carries and 25 yards. He looks terrific. Ricard back there with the quarterback Jackson on a third and three. Lamar, fifth leading rusher in the NFL, but he goes to the air here looking for his tight end, Andrews. And the coverage on the play included Newsom and included Delpit. Well, and that's a that's a big boost for Delpit as well. He struggled a week ago against New England as well, and and yeah, he's had a rough season. He, hasn't he has, he? and and you know there is matched up on on Andrews, who is Lamar Jackson's number one target, as we see Tucker. This you know, and th this is another thing Lamar talked to us about. He said, "Listen, not only do we need to finish games, it's it's we got to finish drives. We're getting in the red zone. We're settling for yeah, we have the greatest kicker in the NFL, but we got to get some touchdowns." And this first drive ends with a with a field goal attempt. All pro Justin Tucker, 35 yarder, perfect, and it's 7-3, 32 yard field goal. With 3:27 to go, both teams have had it once. Both teams have scored on CBS. Steedos, bring home the win with everyone's favorite chip and dip. And by Farmers Insurance. Get a quote at Farmers.com. That was 10 years ago, Super Bowl 47 in New Orleans. A three-point victory for the Ravens over San Francisco included a 34-minute Delay because of a power outage. Joe Flacco is the game MVP. Signed a big deal after that. After the 32-yard field goal by Tucker, there Ernest Johnson watches it sail over his head. A touchback to the 25. And before the game, they honored that team with the Hall of Famer Ed Reed, the significant sack artist Terrell Suggs, and Hall of Famer Ray Lewis. Some kind of defense for sure. That, that was a problem for everybody in the NFL and it wasn't just that year of the Super Bowl that they, they, they've had a, a outstanding defense those, those guys anchored that defense for a long time. Now Joku in the backfield with Chubb. Two tight ends after the field goal for the Ravens first and ten. Fake to Chubb. Blocked by Conklin going deep and he's got him. Amari Cooper out of bounds, forced there by Stone. Big time connection. Put him at the 20-yard line, 55-yard strike, first down Cleveland. This is a high-angle post as Cooper to the top of the screen is going to release to the inside. Looks like he's running a skinny post. Instead, he sticks his foot in the ground, ground and runs a high angle. Jacoby Brissett does an outstanding job of leading him to the outside, away from the safety as Cooper pins it to his face mask and brings it in before Stone can get over there and knock it loose. Longest offensive play so far this season for the Browns, 55 yards, Chubb on first and 10. He's met by a couple, including Jason Pierre-Paul, and may have moved it a couple inches, not more. Let's call it second down and 10. The interesting thing about Cooper and Brissett is Brissett had only coming into today, Trent completed 31 of 55 passes to Cooper but boy they connect right there and then how a 55 well, yarder well and I think some of it you go back to last week that second play of the game the first pass or the second pass of the game where he under threw to Joku and the ball got intercepted and Jacoby was upset with that he's and, and, and you could tell he's like listen if anything I'm going to overthrow it make him run through the ball and that's what he did with Cooper up oh, Rills moved he's going up against oh that's a tough one over there Ball stars offense number 71 five yard penalty Rills has been a starter every game at that left tackle position. Called right there, second and 15 now. You know, it's hard to believe this is his third season, and yet he's he's only 23 years old. Got a bright future ahead of him, Wills does. And possesses all the things you want in a left tackle as far as athleticism and size. Chubb remains, second down, 15. Blocked by Wills here, crumbling pocket. There's the pass, Najoku, met by Queen, bulldozing his way to the 15. That's a gain of 10. Brissett stood tough in that pocket. 
Well, he's trying to get it deep up the field. That's what he really wants, and that's why Najoku, he's blocking first and then releases late. You see Chubb was back there, too, to protect, and then a late release. It's because they really wanted to push the ball into the end zone. They had two receivers in the end zone, a skinny post and a receiver to the outside, and then the late check down. Good job, Barber set maintaining his poise and hitting it. Hunt in the backfield, third and five. Hunt has not had a big day yet this season. There's nobody back here. Uh-oh. They want to take a shot. The shot will go the other way. Hit and grab and set by Kyle Hamilton. First NFL sack, the rookie out of Notre Dame, a number one choice. And the sack puts him back to the 23. It's a loss of eight. Hamilton comes up from the secondary to get it. And the Browns will try for three. Well, this time the Ravens show pressure at the line of scrimmage, and they bring it. Stone coming off the edge. And then Hamilton finishing things off. Very rarely do you see two safeties come from the same side. If they're going to do anything, one will drop in the box, one will blitz, try and cause some confusion. But that time, they bring them both off the right side. Cade York on a 41 yarder to extend the lead and does 10 to 3. The Browns, who have scored on their first two possessions, a two yard touchdown run by Chubb, a 41 yarder right there by York. And we'll be back in 30 seconds after this from Progressive Insurance. Nice work. Never heard you scream like that before. What? That it's not a big deal. I'm scared of spiders, too. I know it's not a big deal because I didn't scream. Oh, I see. You didn't scream. No. So that's why it's not a big deal. Should we play it back? Do it. This What Really Happened replay is brought to you by Progressive. One thing no one would challenge, protecting your home and auto with Progressive. I'm sorry you had to relive that. Rookie Cade York from 41 and a seven point lead for Stefanski's Browns. Nobody can do Halloween like TV's monster hit comedy, Ghosts. See why critics call it genuinely hilarious and an upbeat treat. Join the Halloween party of the year with new episodes of Ghosts after Young Sheldon this Thursday on CBS. So we've got the Cleveland Browns at two and four. They have lost three in a row. And the Ravens, three and three, alternating wins and losses. Two teams from the AFC North. Deep back is Duvernay. The kickoff return team for Baltimore, number one in the NFL. And this is out of the end zone, touchback to the 25, and Mel first and 10. But Kevin, the Ravens signed 15-year veteran wide receiver Deshaun Jackson on Tuesday. He's not active today, but I talked to him pregame. He felt he could have played today, but there was just no need to rush it. But he said, I was sitting on the couch watching a lot of ball and thought, I've got to get back out there, feeling like he still has so much to contribute, particularly speed. I said, I heard you clock 21 miles an hour at practice this week. He smiled. He said, yeah, that was only going about 80%, though. And now he's 35. He'll be 36. <laughs> He'll be 36 here in a couple of weeks. It's amazing. Lamar Jackson said he looks like He's still in year five. He looks terrific. He's played for five teams last year for the Rams and Raiders and did not go to camp with anyone. First and ten, Edwards in the pistol, the fake by Jackson. Blocked by Ricard, crumbling pocket. He throws it away. It was Jadevian Clowney who came up the middle, helps up the quarterback. He got right in his grill. Incomplete pass, second down and ten. Well, and it's good for the Browns to get Jadevian Clowney back. He's missed the last couple of games because of injury and late little slam to the ground. Lamar looking to the officials. And <laughs> it's, it's you got right to la laugh because, you know, when he goes to pick him up, what exactly is he saying? It looking like he's trying to be nice and pick him up, but I'm sure he's not saying anything. Nice I'm going to give him the him benefit of the You're doubt. Give him he's the try, trying to be nice. Yes. Yeah, everybody loves Lamar. <laughs> second down and 10. Clowney has missed three of the last four games with the right ankle. Down he goes, grabbed at the 18, Garrett, Miles Garrett, comes up with his third sack in less than two games. Garrett, one of the top sack men in the NFL, number six right there at two against the Pats last week. And zeroes on the clock. First quarter has come to a close with a 10-3 Cleveland lead. Go to NFLshop.com for a special offer.
I have no idea why our Sean Sperry got his family to wear those hats, but there they are, and they're enjoying the game today. Sean, they must love you a lot. Uh, because I don't know that I, I don't know if I put that on my kids' hats. <laughs> Good. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna get real slime to dump on your head. Yeah, that, good, good. good. I need that. Uh, third and seventeen, starting the second quarter. Two-yard touchdown run by Chubb. The only touchdown we have had so far. Third and seventeen, a ways to go. They got to get to the thirty-five. Look at the time. Here they come. Garrett had him. Up he goes. How did he escape? The hatch was there, and there goes Jackson. And finally brought down on It'll the play by Ronnie Harrison. Gain of seven on third and 17. Clearly not enough. Fourth down. Here comes the punting unit. Well, it'll be interesting to see if his knee goes down when he goes to slide up. Watch the coverage. They're only going to rush three. So that means they're going to drop out and have eight in coverage. See, Wosu Koromoa is standing right there in the middle of the screen. He's the one that's trying to shadow. I thought maybe he was down there, Kevin. I, don't, I, I know the Browns were thinking that, too. A punt nonetheless by rookie Jordan Stout. And there go the whistles. You hear them. Flag is down about the 32. I think there's going to be... You know what, Trent? They must have heard you because <laughs> I think there's going to be a challenge here by the Browns. Taven Bryan had a shot at him, as did Garrett, and down he went, and I don't know that his knee hit. His Lamar knee? is so aware of that stuff. Well, but his forearm does. We so want to challenge his, the ruling on the field. Well, his, his, his wrist. His wrist. His wrist, line the game, the his wrist definitely do. does, but it's not his full forearm I think a wrist or his elbow. Like, so. yeah. Is a wrist like a hand, I, though? Right? Uh, we got to find out from here. Gene. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Gene in here. We'll take a break and bring him in. I'm a Vegas hotel. Is there? Gene Steratore now joins us, our rules analyst. Gene, what'd you see on that play? After review, really, really the close, guys. But let's... Stands, this will be Cleveland's first charge timeout and their first challenge of the game. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 14 minutes and 17 seconds. Okay, Gene. Yep, and as Sean Smith said, when you look at this wrist, guys, you, that wrist right there would be considered part of the hand. Doesn't roll enough to actually bring a piece of the forearm in. So in that case, they'll count that wrist just as part of the hand and keep him not down by contact there. That's why they stayed stands on the play. Okay, so if I understand you, a <laughs> wrist is not a knee, but a bottom, a cheek, is a foot. <laughs> I am all messed up. I, didn't, I know it's Halloween. I knew you were going to take me there, Kevin. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, and this is like an, this is like anatomy, anatomy right, right, right now, guys. Guys. Like this is anatomy lesson with Gene. It's like okay, part of the wrist or not part of the wrist, part of the hand, elbow, cheek. Oh, look at Stout kick this off. Donovan People Jones back at the seven, weaving. No place to run. No place to hide. 69-yard punt. Malik Harrison got him. 10-yard return and just under five seconds on the hang. That was a beauty by the Penn State fourth-round rookie Jordan Stout. Our thanks to Gene Steratore. He'll probably join us later on. Sometimes we had nothing to talk about. We bring in Gene, <laughs> right? Yes, yeah, we yeah. love him so much. All right, so here come the Browns, who have scored the first two times they've had the ball. Yeah, and, and it's it's about the Nick Chubb show, right? They've, they've been able to utilize him. Six carries, only 18 yards. But it's keeping that that defense honest. Seven of seven is Jacoby Brissett as he started off hot. Kareem Hunt is in the contest and gets the call. Look at Queen like a torpedo comes through, brings him down, and a loss to the seven, losing five on the play. I'll tell you, Patrick Queen is at two straight games in a row coming into today. Well, and give Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator, give him some credit. The big play on third down, he brings double safety, overloads one side. This time he blitzes Patrick Queen, who shoots through that A-gap to get into the backfield and get Hunt before he can even get started. Hunt is still in there, second and 15. Brissette, 7-7 seven seven through the air. 121. Hunt hit again. You gotta be kidding me. Queen is untouched. Driving with impunity. 
Another loss of five, this time back to the three. Patrick you're, Queen. You're going to watch Patrick Queen as the snap here. He starts sneaking towards the line of scrimmage. I don't even know if he's supposed to be coming, but then he sees the double block, and it just leaves him a window to get into the backfield. Watch how he hesitates. He doesn't hit it right away. See how he hesitates? And then he's like, oh, wait a second. Nobody's blocking me. I'm just going to go back here and make the tackle. Excellent read and recognition by Queen. Seven in the secondary. Seven for the Ravens. Third and 19. They need the 22. It's on trying to take it up and met by Calais Campbell. It's a gain of five. And so the punting of Stout was big. They get out to the eight. Campbell with the play. Punting unit gets out there for the Browns for the first time today. Well, and that's just, I know it may not be pleasing to a lot of people to hand it off. You got to get, you have to get some separation from your own goal line. You have to give your punter some room so handing the ball off on third and long in, in that situation is actually a good thing just to create some more space for your punting unit Corey Bohorquez will punt Duvernay is back inside the 40 wind at the back of the Cleveland punter this is the number two punt return unit in the NFL Duvernay from the 32 he's got a block from Harrison Breaking tackles along the way, and there he goes. Also got a block from Likely. The tight end. He had an entourage. They put the ball somewhere inside the 15, we think, or maybe the 20. Where did he step out of bounds? 59-yard punt, 50-yard return, put him at, I guess, the 21-yard line. Well, the the, both, the, uh, the Cleveland Browns got out of their lanes. Too many guys are clumped together, so Duvernay starts up inside and then bounces it to the outside. When you lose your lanes and have everybody clumped together, it makes it too easy for the Ravens in the return. What a great job by Duvernay and the guys up front for him creating that space. Like we've said, number two punt return team in the National Football League, and he would be number one in all these different categories, but he doesn't have enough returns yet. So Gus Edwards is the back, and Jackson is under center. It's a first and ten, and here goes Edwards. Down to the 16, hit on the play by Clowney, picks up five. Great job by Ricard. He's going to be on the left, and he's the one that lead blocks. They utilize him so many different ways. Even though he's set up to the left, he's going to be the one to come across formation behind the line of scrimmage and lead Edwards up in the hole. Ravens offense hasn't scored more than 20 points in three straight games. Second down and five with Edwards again in the pistol. And a couple tight ends. It's Edwards. And look like. Garrett got him, bad shoulder and all. He has a little conversation there with the left tackle, Ronnie Stanley. Two of the very best going head-to-head, -head, gain of about a yard inside the 16 of the Browns. The big punt return of 50 by Duvernay sets this up. Well, and this is the part of the part of the field that they, they need to get better production in. Yeah, red zone issues. They have. They, they're settling for too many field goals and... Already having settled for one today. That time it was just miscommunication. Ricard comes over from the backside. Farrell Brown goes up to next level. Nobody blocks Miles Garrett. That, that's the one guy you need to make sure you're blocking against the Browns. Now setting up a third medium. Drake is in. You just saw the offensive coordinator, Greg Roman. Here they come with the blitz, and he has to throw it away. Heavy pressure. And it was all Wosu Koromoa among a couple that were flying in. Taki Taki was close in there, too. And so they're going to have to... Uh, Settle here with a fourth down coming up and go for three. And the Browns do their job defensively. Well, in that time, they dial up. Joe Woods dials up six guys rushing both edge defenders coming to the outside. Taki Taki and Owosu Koromoa come off the edge and had a shot at Lamar Jackson, who's trying to set up that screen. Tucker from 34. And it's 10 to 6. And the Ravens come a bit closer with five minutes gone here in the second quarter on CBS. Okay, we'd open streaming on Paramount Plus.
Ravens come to within four, a second field goal by Tucker, but they have trailed the entire game so far and compared to the first six games when they trailed for just under 13 minutes here, they've trailed so far all 13, 18 of this one. Well, give that last, give the credit to that last three points to their defense, number one, keeping the, the Browns pinned in, and then, of course, their punt return game setting up that field position. To Ernest Johnson is back for the Tucker kickoff. In the end zone, out to the 25 and a touchback and down to Mel. Well, on Monday, Ravens president Sashi Brown, along with members of the Ravens rookie class, helped celebrate the completion of Owings Mills' first destination playground, located less than a mile from the Ravens training facility. It was made possible by a $500,000 contribution from the Ravens as part of the NFL's Play 60 initiative. Kevin? Well, good stuff. Thank you. Mid 60s here in Baltimore today. It'll be cloud cover all afternoon. We've got a wind at about seven. A couple nice special teams plays there. Back to back by the Ravens. Put three more on the board. Chubb is in with two tight ends and a first and ten. Brissett to Chubb. Oh, nice play in the middle. And it was Calais Campbell limiting the number one rusher in the NFL to a gain of two to the 27. Yeah, that time Calais Campbell on on wheels just comes right off of the block and is able to hit Chubb before he gets going. They they like to rotate, they like to rotate Chubb's and Chubb and Kareem Hunt. So Hunt had the last series. There's nothing wrong with with Chubb. He came back in this series just because that's just their normal rotation. It is a second down and eight for Brissett. And he's got time. Posick with a nice block to center. Outside it goes. This is Farrell Brown. Geno Stonehead, look at it, takes about five guys to bring him down, flag thrown back at the 21. They wipe out a 14-yard gain. Holding offense, number 71, 10-yard penalty, second down. We've talked about Wills more in this first half than maybe we've talked about him all season. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a holding call here. You'd see him at the, he's inside there. Harrison, right? Yep. Yeah. That's just the grab and yank him down and pretty obvious call for the officials. Wills had a procedure penalty a little bit ago and then now the holding call. Offensive linemen don't like to get their, their names called out very no. often. <laughs> Five in the secondary, second down and 18 for Brissett through the air, seven to seven. Conklin had a block and now he throws it away because there was pressure and there was a hit by Owe and a flag is thrown. Where the second year Penn State Nittany Lion came in and got at the quarterback. Back at the five, the flag. I think we're going to get hand to the face. I think Owe, where that penalty comes in, he gets that left arm up. There's no foul for roughing the passer. Oh, no foul. They pick it up. <laughs> John goes, Oof. Yes. <laughs> now watch Owe as he goes up with that left hand for the ball. Comes down right in the neck. I, with the way they've been calling it, I'm, I'm surprised they picked it up. Well, he but, did but hit clearly him in the, neck. the intent was to go for the yes. ball, and it just in the. How many times have I we know. seen him go I for know, the ball? That it I hits. Know. Him, I mean, it, it's like I know it. You're right. I'm glad they did pick it up, yes. but I'm saying based on the way that they called it, they need the 35. Hunt is in. Third and 18. Outside Najoku looking for a block out there by David Bell and out of bounds he goes He's shy of the first gaining seven on third and 18 fourth down it is Second consecutive punt coming up for the Browns and Bohorquez Last time Duvernay was back there to return he raised for 50 Back-to-back -back three and outs for this Ravens defense. Duvernay will let it go over his head and into the goal line. Up, oh, they say he hit it. He stepped on it. There was a great effort there, though, get by DeAnthony Bell on the punt by Bohorquez. The punt was... Touchback. It's out to the 20. So it was a 76 yard punt, 56 yard net. They came that close.
Buying a home? Rocket Mortgage. Mean stream now. Well, the top receiver on this Baltimore team, the tight end, Mark Andrews, has only been thrown to once. No catches. And there he sits. Alex Wright has come in to spell Clowney on this particular defensive series for the Browns. Drake is in the backfield. It's first and ten. Oh, and look at the aforementioned right who's in the rookie out of UAB jumping on the back of Drake, throwing him for a loss at two back to the 18. Well, and it's just a matter of reading Conklin. Watch as Conklin goes to pole, right? It's going to be Alex comes behind the line of scrimmage, and it's, it's just it's just reading the tackle. Once he sees the tackle pole and go down the line of scrimmage, he's like, this is going to be this is going to be easy for me. I'm just going to ride it on down. By the way, nothing to Bateman yet. Second down and 12. He is back. The receivers have not caught a lot of passes for this team. You see the nickel. Blocked by Stanley. Crumbling pocket. It goes low, and it was hauled in there by Ricard. And Redwell on the play by Newsom. And he gets on the play about a yard to the 19, third down. And Kevin, I got my 78s mixed up. I had Conklin and Moses there. It was Moses that uh, that they were able to, to to read Alex Wright was and, and be able to chase him down. And that time, Ricard, just the second completion for Lamar Jackson. And, and really, they haven't been able to get anything going. We, t we talked about it coming into this game, getting Lamar Jackson into some kind of rhythm. A little bit of a funk a week ago, completing just over 50% of his passes against the Giants. So far today, just two of five. Clowney back in, third and 11. Here comes Miles Garrett spinning, hitting. There's the throw, and it's caught. There's Bateman spinning. Look at the dent he can put on a defense and out of bounds. And not right there, out of play by Greedy Williams. Rashad Bateman, who has missed the last couple games with a sprained foot, comes up with a catch and run of 26 and a first down. Just across in the middle of the field. Bateman works his way all the way across the field to the far numbers. Lamar Jackson with plenty of time as the Browns only rushed four, dropped seven into zone coverage, trying to keep everything in front on third and long. But Bateman instead able to find a crease, and Jackson had the time to pick up the first down. Edwards the back and gets the call. And there again, Alex Wright. Slowed him up out to the 47, limiting Edwards to a gain of two. Second down and eight coming up. Very similar play to the one that we just had. Same, same thing happened. Moses pulled to work across the formation, and Alex Wright just followed him down that line of scrimmage. See what Greg Roman has dialed up here, and Joe Woods trying to counter, and there's Wright. They're high on this kid. Second down and eight. Pistol with Edwards. Here comes Edwards. There was a nice block in there by Powers, and he gets past midfield. And Awusu Koromoa brings him down. That's a burst of six to the 47. Both these teams like to pull their linemen and get them out in space in the run game. This time Ben Powers pulls over, and he's the lead blocker for Edwards. To make this third and short. So Garrett and Clowney are out there on the edge. Third and two. Jackson through the air, three of six. He takes it here. Break and run tackle. Oh, he's as slippery as a raindrop as he gets down to about the 37, a run of 10 on third and two. And the former MVP is tackled there by Deion Jones, the newest Brown. Watch as this is going to be the exchange here, right? The, the RPO, he's going to watch as they get up the field, and that's why he keeps the ball. And then it's just a matter of making a juke and, and, and making a miss. Man, he is something. I mean, don't you, just, you hold on you for thought, dear life every time you You thought Johnson was in position to make the tackle, and it's like, wait a second, you're right there. Wow. Edwards back there, and it's a first and ten. Jackson to Edwards. Pulling the card with a nice block, and they also got one in there from Moses, and he's down to the 33 on a gain of four. With a stop by uh, John Johnson and a couple others. 
Johnson was the one who kind of called out his team this week, didn't he? He said the commitment, I don't think, has been there. Guys aren't spending enough time outside the building working on their craft. Well, and I think it, it's evident that uh, when talking to the team and talking to the players, they needed to be more of a sense of urgency in terms of what they were going to do from a preparation standpoint because what, what they weren't doing was enough to get things done these last three weeks. Five defensive backs, second down six. Stanley the block and downfield they go. Isaiah Likely. He's the tight end working his way to the 17. Tackled by Deion Jones. A 16-yard completion by Lamar Jackson. A first down for Baltimore. Watch, well, got Andrews going up the slot and then Likely coming underneath. Of course, the focus is going to be on Andrews and, and Likely gets open in that backside zone. Good recognition by Lamar Jackson in an accurate throw. Tenth catch for the rookie Likely out of Coastal Carolina. And look what they're doing this drive compared to the three previous. And in the game, Justice Hill. He's missed the last couple with a hamstring injury. Missed last year with an Achilles. Boy, they can be deep, can't they, at that back position? Dobbins out today. Time for Lamar. Blocked by Moses. Here comes Wright. There goes Jackson. Pump faking, driving out of bounds inside the 10. Walking the tightrope and taking it down to the 7. What footwork. A gain of 10. His second run on this drive of 10. Plenty of time for Jackson. The Browns only rushing four. Wright gets knocked to the ground, and Jackson, as he extends his play, I thought for a second here, Phillips was going to be able to yank him out of, out of bounds. All right, a timeout taken, two-minute warning. Goal to go for the Ravens when we come back trailing Cleveland by four. Okay, hear me out. Anyone can change the game with the power of Visa. We're in Baltimore today and coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Join J.B., Phil, Nate Boomer, and Hall of Fame coach Bill Cowher for all the latest NFL scores and highlights. Next from New York, the Verizon Halftime Report. Two red zone possessions today for the Ravens, two field goals. First and goal here at the seven. Jackson with a couple of 10-yard runs. Edwards in the backfield, record the block. There he goes for six. And the Ravens have their first lead today on a seven-yard touchdown run by Gus Edwards. Great job of blocking. Edwards gets untouched into the end zone. This is all just going to collapse down and then Ricard coming through to kick it out. Easy for Edwards. I know the mental struggles that go through a rehab like he had to I go know, through. You've had, that. You've had the ACL. I'll tell you what, it's... Uh, I'm sure that means a lot to him getting in the end zone. Tucker puts it in. Three-point Baltimore lead. First lead today. You're right. The ACL, and you've had it, tore it last year before the season began. And he takes it in after a year of waiting and working, rehabbing, rewarded there with a touchdown run. Transforming smiles, changing lives. Last couple years, 2021, Ravens and Browns split their meetings. Weeks 12 and 14, two weeks apart last week. The Browns had a bye week in between, giving them two straight games against Baltimore. There's a look at Edwards, who gets his first touchdown since week 14 of 2020. And Bateman, of course, had the big catch and run of 26. And Ernest Johnson's going to take it out for Cleveland with the beat on him, Hamilton, who uh, looked like he tripped him up, and then he was finished off. And a flag is thrown at the 21 with a look at Brissett. And it's going to be against the Browns on the return. Early return. Holding. Receiving team number 56. Got penalty. First down. Well, Jacoby Brissett really struggled last week. 21 of 45. 47 percent but today he is eight of nine for 128 and looks sharp he has started off sharp. he actually started the game seven of seven and it's getting the tight ends involved and then this big pass to amari cooper 
Last couple series that there have been adjustments by the Baltimore defense as you see two three and outs and negative yardage but Brissett starting off hot eight to nine hundred and twenty eight yards hunt wide first and ten Cleveland two timeouts own twelve Brissett blocked by Conklin nice catch at about the 19 yard line to Joker you talked about him in the start seven yard pickup right there he has put his fingerprints on this one yeah and Chuck Clark came up he thought he was going to get an interception there you see him diving for the ball and Njoku just dove in front of him and was able to bring it in second down three and he's right on the money and again the stiff arm by Njoku he goes right into Clark and then brought down with help from Bynes the catch and run to take him to the 36 18 yard pickup and a first down back to back catches by Najoku giving him separation after that penalty on the kickoff return Browns still have two timeouts in their pocket Najoku six carries or catches and 68 yards and that was close and Cooper got the ball right in front of Peters and they call it a completion to the 45 and he picks up a good throw by Brissett I don't know how he caught this ball because I at first I thought it was either intercepted or knocked away Cooper you can see brings that ball in under two minutes so they'll decide up upstairs if he has both feet down that back foot still on the ground second foot and he gets out of bounds to stop the clock five in the secondary second down and two Hunt was back there they dump it off deflected lot oh it was messy a lot of debris and it's incomplete and they were going for Hunt and Bynes Blew it up. It'll be third down. Well, and Brissett is, is very fortunate this ball isn't intercepted. If that thing's tipped up in the air Look any that. further, that's good. that could be Bynes could have a walk in, and right behind him is Williams. If it's tipped up higher, he could have a walk in. So setting up a third and short here. They got the five in the secondary. It's third down and two for the Cleveland Browns. Trailing for the first time today. Hunt is in the backfield. Conklin a block. Reset to the air. An incomplete looking for Cooper. They're going to get, they're gonna get Marcus Peters. They the sure are. Yep. Peters was called. He was covering. Peters is playing with a quad injury. Defense, defense number 24. The ball can place that spot of foul. Automatic first down. Cooper working up the right sideline. I'm not sure what he what he's upset about. He, get, he gets both his hands on him. Ravens are coming off a season high 10 penalties last week in that Giants game. 10 penalties and over 70 yards, 74 to be exact. With Hunt, first and 10. Two Cleveland timeouts. Reset. Looking long, pressured pocket, got away from Oway, and finally brought down on the play by Justin Houston. With his brain groin and all, second sack for the Ravens. Timeout is taken, the ball at the 41, and they lose on that play a yard. And the clock at 53 seconds. Coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report from our CBS studios in New York with James Brown and the crew scores, highlights, and news from a busy week seven. All coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. So, one timeout remaining. The ball is inside the 41 of Baltimore. Cleveland, who led up until that touchdown run by Edwards moments ago with a second and ten. Yeah, and Brissett, I think, got it. I know he's trying to get up the field. Listen, with the time on the clock and, and what you're trying to get done as a quarterback is you're trying to push it. You want to score a touchdown, right? So you're looking up the field, but his secondary receiver in the middle of the field was open had he just worked to that second progression. Got lucky to just get it back near the line of scrimmage. Hunt is in the backfield. Second down and 10. Here comes Houston. There goes Brissett. The ball is loose. It's a fumble at the 48 and recovered by the Browns and the center jumped on it Ethan Posick it's Look. a third sack and a loss of eight and they're back near midfield Houston hasn't played in a few weeks because of that groin injury and he's going to be working all the way from the outside as he comes around on Wills Wills gets his hands on him a couple times but that right hand come in and chop it out of Brissett Browns lucky to get back on the ball have to use their last time out
So Houston gets his second sack. Hamilton has one. The clock is at 43 seconds. Cleveland took the timeout. One left for them. Third and 18. They need the 30 for a first. But now maybe looking just to get in the field goal range with Hunt in the backfield. Cade York is Stan Limber. Wind at the back of Brissette. Blocked by Hunt with the chip, and now they go to him. Nice catch in the open field, got by Hamilton. And then finally doused by Pierre Paul on a gain of four, got to the 46. Fourth down. Baltimore has taken a timeout, and they've got one left, and we'll be back in 30 seconds after this from the Home Depot. We decided it's time to put a different kind of power tool in your hands. Store mode in the Home Depot app gives you in-store tools made to help you get more done. To guide you every step of the way and explore products quickly with the scan. That way you get the top brands at the best prices without missing a beat. It's made for doing. Download the Home Depot app and see how doers get more done. So York, the highest drafted kicker in the NFL since 2016, who has a big leg in pregame to this end of the field, was kicking 62 yarders. This would be about a 64-yard field goal. So they're going to punt with Bajorquez. And Kevin, I think this is the right decision. I, if you miss the field goal, you give great field position to the Ravens, and you know they have Justin Tucker over on that side as well. Duvernay, and it will be, look at uh, Maroon inside the 10. Good hang of 4-5. Allowed guys like Herb Miller to get down there on a 47-yard punt. They'll step aside with the Ravens up by three on CBS. You said close. So the Ravens, who lost to the Giants last week, 24-20, a critical stretch for them. A win would keep them atop the AFC North. They'd improved at 2-0 in the division. A win for the Browns can pull them ahead of the Ravens. And maybe even with the 3-3 and Bengals, who are just destroying Atlanta right now. So that probably is out of the equation. But this is huge, because next week, Cleveland has got Cincinnati. Two division foes back-to-back, -back, then they're by. Well, and that was the discussion that we that we had with Miles Garrett. He said, listen, even though we've lost three in a row and we, we haven't finished and we've had some close ball games, we know these next two weeks we can change the course of our season. If we can get a win in Baltimore and then play Cincinnati the following week, it, it can really change the course of what this season is for them. They're going to sit on the ball, as you can see, unless they got some trickery up their sleeve. Do a knee, he goes. They'll run out the clock, and both benches will go to their respective locker rooms. A seven-yard touchdown run by Gus Edwards was the score for the Ravens, and a two-yard touchdown run by Chubb. Brissett effective, 12 of 14, 165, had a big pass to Cooper for 55, and uh, has looked uh, calmer and better today for the Browns, who are 2-4, and four, Ravens 3-3. Three and three. Halftime is next after these first half highlights from Verizon and a word from your local CBS station. Jeez. Oh, Ironic. Edelman struggling with reception. Two things I hate dropping. Balls and calls. Well, you need a better network. Time to switch to Verizon, the most reliable 5G network in America. I'm listening. You even get a free 5G phone on them. Sweet. So now, whether you're in the city or on the road. Reception. And getting the network you want and a brand new phone. Touchdown! Oh! Touchdown! Switch now and get the new Google Pixel. In the first half here, he was quiet, actually. Third down conversions, Brown... 0 of 5. You see the sacks by the Ravens. Houston's got two of those. Kevin Harlan alongside Trent Green. What do you think of the first half? You know, I thought the, the Browns came out with a great attack, a great plan. They got Nick Chubb involved early in that first series. Then they had the big throw to Amari Cooper. They got the points in their first two drives. And then the adjustments that Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator for the Ravens, made was outstanding because a couple of three and outs in a row really put pressure on Jacoby Brissett and changed things. And then the Ravens taking advantage of field position later in that half. So it was about the run game for the getting Gus Edwards back his first action since the 2020 season because dealing with the ACL before the 2021 season, 
He looked in his old form, averaging nearly five yards per carry, getting into the end zone for the first time since that ACL tear. I know that had to feel good because the amount of work that you put in coming back from that type of injury. We, Kevin, you mentioned the, 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 the numbers of Nick Chubb. He does have the one touchdown rushing, but just 20 yards rushing for the NFL leader. And there's the stats for Gus Edwards put together a heck of a first half. Chubb had the two yard touchdown run on the first possession and had a couple of big plays, including a 13 yard catch and run. And there is Andrews and the terrific tight end has right now no receptions that may change in the second half Duvernay is going to watch this sail over his head out of the end zone to the 25 and down to the field and Mel thank you Kevin well Kevin Stefanski told me we keep getting stalled offensively by too many penalties he wants to get back to the run game just 17 total yards in that first half he said defensively our issue's been on third and long we can't allow Baltimore to convert on third and long meanwhile John Harbaugh happy with the run game offensively in the first half uh, but he said we've got to get into the passing game. We've got to get Mark Andrews involved. Look to take some shots downfield. His message was finish. Finish drives and finish this game. Something they've struggled to do lately, guys. Oh, thank you. Yep, that has been a problem for sure. Outscored in the fourth quarter, 64-22. No Edwards in the backfield. It's first and ten for Lamar Jackson, 4-7 through the air. Ricard with the block and buys time for Joe. Oh, look out! Here comes Emerson. And down goes Lamar Jackson. Second set, Emerson's first in his young career, a rookie out of Mississippi straight. He came shooting through and nailed the Raven quarterback. Emerson's really, it's a delayed blitz because he's standing over here. Watch as the rush happens, he's, he's sitting there filling the gap. I think he's waiting to see if Ricard goes out in a, a route, but once Ricard blocks, then watch a delayed blitz. He comes on the pressure. And Jackson sees him too late, not anticipating that pressure because he didn't come right away. Second and 17. There's a beautiful knockaway by the linebacker Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa. Big time play right there. Third and 17 for Baltimore. Well, I'm trying to get the trying to get the ball that time to Andrews. As you said, Kevin, just in the first half, only targeted one time, no receptions. That team, that time Owusu Koromoa able to knock it away, setting up a third and long. Andrews last week had seven catches, 106 yards, and a touchdown. He is number two among tight ends and receptions, tied with Kelsey at Kansas City in yards. Well, and he's targeted more than any other yes, tight end in the is. NFL, and just two today. Six in the secondary, Jackson third and 17. Crumbling pocket, they got him again! Down he goes, and this time, Taven Bryan! They just signed him as a free agent from Jacksonville in the offseason. He gets at the Raven quarterback. First sack is a Brown. And the punting unit out there on fourth and long for Baltimore. Well, perfect way for Joe Woods in this Cleveland defense to get started in the second half. Sacks and negative plays. Only rushing four, dropping seven. Nowhere for Lamar Jackson to go with the football. Not the way you want to start things off if you're John Harbaugh. A punt is Jordan Stout. And deep back is Donovan Peoples Jones with a catch at about the 35 34. He'll look for a block. He tries to get one there from Greedy Williams, and down he goes. And it's an eight yard return, 62 yard punt, hang of 4 4. Jackson sat twice on that one offensive series as we step aside. At Chipotle, our garlic guajillo recipe brings a whole new dimension to steak. Our most Collins M&T Bank Stadium, downtown Baltimore, and the first half resume for the Browns. We talked about those first two series coming out, how effective they were using Chubb and getting the play action going, the big pass to Amari Cooper, but not a whole lot. Those last three series, of course, you see the yards there in that final one, right? Trying to get into field goal range. Two tight ends, Chubb in the backfield. Oh, here they come up the middle. And Bynes can't get him. Queen does, though. Patrick Queen having another brilliant game for Baltimore. Isaac's Brissett back at the 35. Losing five on the play. Mike McDonald continuing what had success with in the first half, and that's bringing blitz and bringing pressure. Queen comes up the middle first and then binds second before Queen gets off the deck and comes back and finishes off Brissett. 
There's Mike McDonald getting things fired up here. Ever since those first two series where Cleveland went down and scored, he started to bring a lot more pressure. Four sacks today by the Baltimore defense, 11 in less than the last three games. Second and 15, blocked by Wills. Chubb out there, read well on the play by Geno Stone taking the place of the injured Marcus Williams. Gain of two right there, Mel. Well, Trent mentioned Jacoby Brissett addressing the team last week immediately following the loss to New England. He told us his message was, hey, we've got a long season ahead of us. This is where it starts to get in division stretches and the league gets fun. He said this isn't college when you lose a few games and you're out of it. But he said that loss just felt gross. We needed to cleanse ourselves of it. He said he even got a haircut, guys. Well, you got to get a haircut. If it's going to be gross, third and 13. They got Hunt in the backfield. Hunt will release. Brissett. Oh, knocked away. That's a fumble. Campbell knocked it away. Recovered by Elway. It's a turnover. The first. And Baltimore will have the ball at the 25 of the Browns. Well, it's that guy, Justin Houston, again. Had a couple of sacks at the end of the half. Forced a fumble. They weren't able to come up with the ball. But Houston comes around the edge, and he's the one that swipes and knocks the ball out of Brissett's hands. Watch as he reaches out, extends. Oh, it's actually Campbell. Calais Campbell, the second one to swipe at it. I thought Houston, when he reached out with that hand, was the one that knocked it loose. But it's Campbell with that left hand able to knock it loose. Great field position for the Ravens. Cleveland 25. Edwards in the backfield, pistol formation, first and ten for Jackson. Four of eight through the air. It's Gus Edwards cutting and then drilled on the play by middle linebacker Jacob Phillips and a gain of one to the 24. Well, and, and coming into this game, the Browns were only 24th in run defense, and, and Gus Edwards right up there around five yards per carry. Good stop there to start off the second half for that unit up front. And in Drake will check in. This is the 23rd ranked defense. Another takeaway. Now nine consecutive games. The Ravens have had a takeaway. Longest active streak in the NFL. Second down nine. With Drake in the backfield. And the call. Uzu Koromoa will force him out of bounds. Read it well. Out of bounds about the 23. Gain of two to New York and James. A safe move by Dallas. Oh, yeah. Ezekiel Elliott from one yard out. Give it to the guy who can smash the pile forward. And Ezekiel does that. Puts the Dallas Cowboys up 10 to 6 over to Detroit Lions. Back to Kevin, Trent, and Melanie. Phil uh, has played the Cowboys a lot, and he knows about what it's like to play in front of that crowd down there. Yeah, he de he definitely does, and, and Cowboys going to what they know best. Third and seven, and they're going deep, and for DuVernay, and the coverage by the rookie Emerson, and a flag at about the nine. Or was that Delpit down there? Oh, defense number 22. It was, Five Delpit. Penalty. Automatic first down. Well, initially it was Emerson, as we said, yeah. Well, it must have been on Andrews. The Delpit was watching Andrews, and that was the yep. penalty. And not on Emerson, who was covering Duvernay. Well, Del Delpit was sitting there waiting for, for Andrews. Andrews goes up, gives a little stutter after about five to seven yards, and then takes off again, and it's that next little chuck that happens that draws the penalty as he holds him up. Justice Hill is the back. The fake, and here comes Lamar Jackson. A block in there by Powers and run out of bounds. A couple guys were on his tail, including Delpit and Newsom, and a gain of seven, and they'll put him about the 10. Watch the play fake here, and then he gets around to the outside, and then it's just a foot race to get to the edge. Delpit's out there, Newsom. Second down and three after the fumble by Brissett in a uh, disintegrating pocket. Drake is the back. Fake. 
It's Jackson. He broke one tackle. And then around his waist, he's got Ronnie Harrison after a four-yard gain just outside the five. Well, and with the fake to Duvernay, that draws the defense upfield. Lamar Jackson just keeps the ball on the read and is able to pick up the first down. We've highlighted this numerous times throughout this game is the problems in recent weeks for the Ravens inside the red zone. Last time they were down here, though, Gus Edwards ran it in. McCary is in as the left tackle. 65. Stanley out. Duvernay in motion. And Drake. Oh, they got him hemmed in. Nice read right there by Isaiah Thomas, the rookie out of Oklahoma. No gain on the play. They remain outside the five. Good discipline by the Browns on the backside. I know they're trying to continue. Drake had such a big week last week. There's a lot of attention drawn to him. And if you're a Raven fan, you're wondering why Stanley isn't in. We don't know either. Uh, he, of course, has been injured. He's pass blocked very well. He had ankle surgery earlier on. McCary, though, has taken his place at times this season and done well. Well, and I think it's just a matter of rotating and not, not get, getting every stab, but just getting that rotation and trying to give him a rest. Second down and goal at the five to the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. Grabbed by Josh Oliver. Second of the year, five-yard throw. They're waving it off. That ball must have come loose. Delpit, Delpit was knocking yep. it loose. Delpit was back there. We got to watch that again. Delpit with a nice play. He's got it. No, he doesn't oh, yeah, have that's it. That's why he couldn't see it. It was hidden by his legs when he came down and could not hold on. So it is third and goal at the five. Watch Andrews here. Nine red zone reception, second most in the NFL. Jackson caught, slant, Bateman. Gain of four just outside the goal line, wheeling his way there. Fourth and goal coming up. Bringing extra tight ends in, bringing Ricard in. And they're going to go for three. Nope, they're going to keep him oh, on yeah. the sideline. There isn't, wasn't much hesitation there. Well, but uh, Tucker was on his way out, and then he had to turn around because get back in here. <laughs> So now fourth and goal at the one. Watch the QB sneak with Ricard pushing from behind. Edwards, Ricard will lead the way. Touchdown. One yard touchdown by Gus Edwards. That is his second today. Calais Campbell was in there to bring some extra meat. Taking it right up there. Follow Ricard. Coming back from that ACL prior to last season. Two touchdowns on the day for Gus Edwards. Rounds of allowed now. 31 points off turnovers. The last two games, the extra point makes it 20 to 10. Baltimore. Gus Edwards he hasn't scored a touchdown since 2020. Campbell knocked it away with heavy pressure from Houston. And then Edwards finishes it off, cashing in on the fumble by the Browns. Roger, we've located it. The Call of Duty combo. Little Caesar slices and sticks. You spice it up and buy Experian. Do more with your credit score. Crab cakes and football. That's what Maryland does so well. Hi, Neil. There's our buddy Neil. And here's the kickoff after the one yard touchdown run by Edwards after a fumble forced by Campbell. In and out of the end zone to the 25 and a touchback and a first and 10 for Brissett, who fumbled the last time out there. He's been sacked five times. Saturday, the SEC on CBS features one of the most festive games in college football and the Gators look to take a bite out of number one Georgia and their perfect season. We'll get you set for kickoff beginning at 2.30 Eastern with a drive to Atlanta. 
followed by college football today. That Saturday, the SEC is on CBS. Let's see how the Browns respond. They led for a good part of that first half, but they have trailed after two Edwards touchdown runs. 14 unanswered. Here's a handoff, and it goes to Chubb. Weaving his way up, grabbed by Travis Jones. Picks up five, Chubb does, out to the 30. Well, when you talked about the Browns leading early in this game, the Ravens now in every game this season have had a double-digit lead, so seven consecutive games with a double-digit lead. Browns trying to make a comeback here. Get things going after those opening opening two series. They've really struggled offensively to deal with the pressure that the Ravens have been putting on them. Job on second down and five. Here he goes. Wills tries to get a block. Also, Froholt opened up the door. That's a first down lunge as he works into the secondary and picks up six and brought down by Queen and Clark. And a first down up to the 36-yard line of the Browns. Well, and it's easy when you fall behind by double digits to all of a sudden say, okay, it's going to be a pass-only game. But there's still plenty of time left, just under seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. Stick with that run game. Try and get Chubb going. He really, we, we've talked about it, the yards per carry. But now back-to-back five-yard runs. With a first and ten, Chubb. Grabbed here by Urban. And ridden down about the 39 and a gain of four. So Chubb, uh, three consecutive runs for five, six, and four right there. Well, and I would give about three of that four yards to Nick Chubb because he had somebody hanging on him right at the line of scrimmage, and he was just able to work it. So they've run the ball 14 times. They've thrown 15 times. Second down and six. Good time. Long throw, incomplete. Humphrey's going to draw a flag about the 37, watching a couple receivers. There was Donovan Peoples-Jones and Njoku very close together. On that sideline, down about the 39, and that's where the flag goes against the Ravens. Well, and I know they're going to get the yardage because that's of the penalty. Defense, number 26. The ball be placed at spot the foul, automatic first down. Chuck Clark was back there, too. Well, I know they're going to get the yardage because of the penalties, but I, but, but was I, it Stone? Maybe it was on Stone. I would like to, I would like to have seen Brissett take the underneath throw for about an eight-yard gain. You know, too many guys up the field. Watch, you got two guys right here. You got an open player right there. The defender, there are four defenders that have gone back there, and I know as the play continues, they drift up field. But you have an easy throw underneath to Bryant that gets you by the sticks. He, he tried forcing, got fortunate. That he got the penalty and, and picked up the yardage that way. And it goes on Stone. And here's Chubb on first and ten. Getting a steady diet of him as he takes it up the middle. And was hit there by Chuck Clark. With a gain of a yard down near the 36. Trying to go to a little up-tempo here. The Browns losing last week to New England 38-15. They've lost three in a row. Here's a second and nine. Good block by Conklin. Coming back was Peoples-Jones, who was hit on the play by Marlon Humphrey. And he got down inside the 30 and picks up seven. And I like the way that Peoples-Jones came, came back to the quarterback, came back to the throw instead of sitting and waiting on it, where Humphrey could have came up and knocked it away. Yes, it got him short of the sticks because he came back to it, but it secured the catch and set up this third and short. Third down and two. Kareem Hunt is in. Ravens have had success bringing pressure. Fake to Hunt. Shovel pass to Joku. And looks like he's got the first as a nice deceptive play produces four. Najoku has his second rush of the season to the 26th and a first down for Cleveland. Well, quick fake and then a shovel pass. Conklin's able to hold him off for a little bit. But he, he gave him enough of a block to allow Njoku to get around that edge and pick up the first down. Now Chubb back in with a couple tight ends. It's Chubb. Lead block, Petonio, the all-pro guard. And hit right there by Geno Stone. 
He gains four. He's down to the 22. Let's go back to Phil and James in New York. Indy finally on the board. You got it right. They find a way to finally get in the end zone. Matt Ryan to Paris Campbell. Four yards out for the touchdown. Now Tennessee leads Indianapolis 13 to 7. Back to Kevin Trent and Melanie. All right, guys. Thank you. Colts are trying to get some traction. Second down and six. Chubb in the backfield. From the 22, drills the block and going deep. And looking at about the three for Amari Cooper. And the coverage back there by Demarion Williams, a rookie out of Houston. Third and six coming up. Well, Brissett's going to be mad at himself because he, he has an opportunity to get a completion down inside the 10. He just leads him a little bit too much. Ravens have scored 17 unanswered points. Third down and six, ninth play of the drive. Play clock at two. And he goes short and underneath, and Peoples Jones goes to the 19. Chuck Clark was there. He picks up three. Fourth down coming up. Three to go. They will try for three. So the Baltimore defense holds them as the Browns are working their way downfield. Well, and there's no hesitation on the sideline of the Browns going for this field goal, make it a one score game or attempt to make it a one score game. Good coverage that time up the field by the Ravens. Brissett taking the quick throw underneath, but not enough to get the first down. Cade York from 37. Wind from the near side to the far at about eight miles an hour. Got it. It's 20 to 13, and Baltimore's lead is cut. It's a seven point game. We're in the third quarter on CBS. We are back in Baltimore. Inside the NFL goes to Brooklyn, streaming on a new date this Wednesday, exclusively on Paramount Plus. Jacoby Brissett, 16 and 19, 180 through the air. Had a pocket that was crumbling, and he was whacked at, and the ball was cut loose, and Baltimore got a one-yard touchdown run by Edwards, one of two for him. Chubb with a touchdown run. Browns have lost three straight, three and three record for the Ravens. Both teams coming in off losses last week. Well, Brissett is playing a lot better. We had the game last week against New England as well. He's a lot more definitive today, going through his progressions quickly. He has been sacked five times and does have that fumble, but he has handled things very well today. Now a touchback to the 25 on the kickoff. Halloween's still a week away, but Miles Garrett wasted no time getting his decorations up for this year. Of course, last year was the quarterback graveyard, but this year he went all out with a Stranger Things theme as he told us he's a big fan of the show. Opposing quarterbacks are back in the front yard, but this time they're getting sucked up into the upside down with a Vecna watching over the front door, and I believe I spy a Ravens jersey in that yard, guys. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> he goes all out. I tell he you. Does. He goes all out. A week they, ago, set the franchise record. Yes, he did. Drake in the backfield with the first and ten. And the handoff goes to Drake. Wrapped up right in there by Togiai. Tommy Togiai with no gain on the play. He played at Ohio State. And uh, Dobbins, J.K. Dobbins, another Buckeye, who had started the previous four games. He is out with the knee. And so updating for all of our viewers in Ohio. A couple of... Ohio State players are going second down and ten. Boy, do they have a big win over Iowa yesterday. Oof. That was <laughs> man. <laughs> that was pretty lopsided. That, that was, was something else. Second and ten. Clowney taking a breather. Right is in. Here comes Garrett. There goes Ricard in the screen pass. Taki Taki tries to knock him down from behind and it's out to the 44-yard line. A flag is thrown. 19-yard catch and run by Ricard, his sixth reception of the season. Well, Kevin, I think they're going to get James Prochet at the end of that play. He got into a shoving match with one of the Browns. And, of course, usually the last one to, to throw something is the one that's thrown, got the penalty on him. Let's see if it's offsetting so or just the play on. is the first down after the play. Dead ball, personal foul. Baltimore, number three. 
15 yard penalty. First down. You're right on Prochet. See if we can spot it here. Well, the screen here to Ricard, he's able to go down low and get the ball, and then he has the big boys out in front of him as he gets through, and Taki Taki gets him at the end. Yeah, him and Emerson are going at it. He and Emerson were going at the top. Some back and forth here, a little shove, and then that right there, the you right hand the to, the, one, to right? the head, <laughs> yep. It's always, this, it's always the it last always guy. Is, yeah. Dad always told you that, right? <laughs> yeah. Drake in the backfield, first and ten. Going outside, crushed there by Taki Taki. And out to the 32 on a gain of two. So now we're getting into that area where the Ravens have had a double digit lead in the second half and not been able to hold on in their three losses. And they were at a double digit lead. Now it's down to seven, and the clock is ticking to wind up the third. Well, and you know they're one in five over the last six home games. I saw that, and I you've got yeah, to isn't be that crazy? And we can you've see the atmosphere in this stadium. Uh, you, it's you hard know, to you, believe. Such a, it's such a home field advantage, but not in recent uh, recent games. Hill was in the backfield. It's a second down and eight, and the pass with a nice tackle there by Greedy Williams is caught by Rashad Bateman, who picks up five, and he's out to the 37-yard line. And these are these double-digit lead games we were talking about in the second half. Well, and it's now seven, so we'll we'll see how it ends up. You can see the the records. Baltimore had scored 17 unanswered points after trailing initially seven nothing and ten to three. Well, and both these teams have struggled in the fourth quarter yes. in terms of their defenses giving up points. Number one and number two in the NFL and points allowed in the fourth quarter. So things are about to get exciting here. Cleveland has blown a couple of. Double-digit leads. Here comes Gus. And oh, he's slippery as he takes it into the secondary and up to the 43. Hit by Delpit and others. And Edwards goes for six. And zeroes on the clock. Third quarter is in the books. And Baltimore takes a seven-point lead to the fourth on CBS. New tomorrow. If there's something down there, we'll find it. Baltimore by seven. Trent, they have led each game this season by 10 points or more, and that was the case again today. Yeah, now it's about finishing games. You know, John Harbaugh told Melanie coming out of halftime, finish, and Lamar Jackson going into production meetings this week told us what's the number one thing you have to do, and he said finish. So that's been the... Uh that's been the theme all week. Justice Hill is back there, first and ten. Hill with the block. That ball's deflected and batted up in the air. And I believe it was Isaiah Thomas who got a hand on it. There was a lot of congestion, but I think the rookie out of Oklahoma is the one who got a paw on it and got in that passing lane. Incomplete. Well, I agree with you, Kevin. I think it is Thomas. He does. And watch. He's going to go up and try and make a one-handed catch. And then Lamar. Lamar. Lamar it away. The <laughs> smart thing he did is knock it down. So many times quarterbacks try and catch it, and then they end up getting lost yardage. So go ahead and take the incompletion, knock it down. He could have used your daughter there for volleyball <laughs> work because that's what he looked like, huh? Six in the secondary for Cleveland under pressure right there. Jackson's number is not good against the Blitz. Second down and ten. The pump fake. And the handoff, and here comes the elusive Justice Hill, close to a first down. As he was brought down by Johnson, he's close to the first. He got outside the 48 on the play. Well, that's the old pump fake, right? You pump it to the outside. You get the defense trying to flow that way, thinking it's a quick throw, and it just freezes them enough. Then you, th then you hand the ball off on the draw. Nice gain sitting up third and short. Where the run game now at 100 and... 11 yards for Baltimore, Cleveland just 37 rushing yards. Third down and one. Edwards in. Ricard wrapped up. He was out of the block slow. That's a big body to get moving on that third and one. But he may have uh, pushed it a little bit to get the first, and it was a stop on the play. Miles Garrett again. Garrett, who's got a bad <laughs> shoulder and a bad bicep. One on the left, one on the right, and he got him right there. The, the bad shoulder is the left shoulder the bad bicep is the right and they're gonna go for it on fourth and one what do you think well it's aggressive and here they go underneath center. oh they're trying to draw him off sides with andrews he goes underneath center 
And Andrews has it, pitches out to Lamar. Good block by Hill! Did you see the block by that? Hill? <laughs> and Jones drives him out of bounds. Drives him out of bounds near the 38. A 12-yard run for Lamar Jackson for the first. Well, with Mark Andrews going underneath center, does a hard count. They don't jump, so the defense maybe relaxes a little bit, thinking, well, they're not going to do it. They're just trying to get us off sides. Nobody's going to turn and run a the old school high school sweep, right? The old power sweep with the with the pitch to the running back and LJ with a little stiff arm there at the end of the play as well. Jackson is averaging seven yards a carry on the ground. Seven for 49, 10th play of the drive. Edwards back there, first and 10 into the secondary and grabbed by John Johnson to the 34 on a gain of four. Well, and the important thing to remember here, I know, I know they want to get touchdowns here. You're already in Justin Tucker's field goal range. So when you're in the fourth quarter, it's a one possession game. Now you need to make sure you're smart with the football, right? We know what's happened a week ago against the Giants. The turnovers in the fourth quarter. Be smart with the football. You're in field goal range. I'm not saying be completely conservative, but don't try forcing a situation that isn't there. Two tight ends. It's second down and six with Edwards the back. Clowney resting. Jackson, I think a screwed up play. And Taki Taki was back there with a couple others. Thomas included to blow it up in a loss of three. And they're back to the 38, 37 yard line. You know, that, that just didn't look right from the get go. No. And maybe it just had to do with the pressure coming off the edge. I think Edwards went to the wrong side, right? He was going right, and Lamar thought he was going to go left. Well, I don't think they anticipated Delpit blitzing off of that side. When Ricard went in motion, they thought Delpit was going to move back. Instead, Delpit stayed on that edge, and then on the snap, he came off, and there's nobody assigned to him. So, actually, a good job by Lamar to not lose that football with the free guy coming in there. Clowney back in third and seven. Blocked by Stanley through the hands of Bateman and the coverage on the play by Martin Emerson. So, here comes Tucker. They'll try for three and get their lead back up to 10. Jackson today through the air, 7 of 14. Well, and this is a ball that Bateman's got to have. I mean, sure. It's, it, I mean, that's just an easy, what appears to be an easy pitch and catch, right? You have a corner off. Hey, we're going to pick up five to seven yards. We know we're going to be short of the sticks, but it's making it a more manageable field goal attempt. Instead, it goes through his hands. And I know you get used to Tucker making these types of kicks, but it sure is a lot of pressure. Six years since he's missed, 61 straight in the fourth quarter. He was hitting him from 59 at this end before the game. 55-yard field goal, Tucker. It is perfect. 62 straight. It's, it's, not, a, it's not even it's a question. Unbelievable. It's like, it goes right down the middle. That's Someday he will be in Canton. And the lead is back to 10. And Tucker with another field goal, his third today. This from 55, Ravens up by 10 on CBS. Your home and car, and by Pepsi, made for football watching. Ravens just took six minutes and 16 seconds off the clock and a 13-play drive and a 55-yard field goal by Justin Tucker. And now the kickoff. In the end zone and out. To the 25. Ravens defense today. Well, they've been outstanding. They've been able to, after the first two possessions the Browns had, they've really clamped things down. Put the, kept the run game under control. Put pressure on Brissett. Five sacks on the day. They did knock the ball loose a couple times. This one they recover. Oway does. Mike McDowell, you see the numbers. Five sacks, two forced fumbles with that fumble recovery on the day. He's dialed up the pressure after that second series of the game. Chubb in the backfield, first and 10. Brissett to Chubb, blocked by Bryant. Here goes Brissett on the move, and he's got the first, it looks like, on the slide. Uh, Patrick Queen made sure he was down. He'll be shy by a yard. Mellon again to nine. Kevin, the Browns are going to have to find a way to come back in this one without their tight end. David Njoku, he went off into the locker room with the athletic trainers. I'm told it is an ankle injury. He's been declared out. Meanwhile, Pharaoh Brown just went off to the locker room with an injury as well. So the responsibility at tight end falls to Harrison Bryant. They just, thank you, Mel. They just gave him the first down on a readjusted spot. Chubb on first and ten. 
and being brought down by Marlon Murphy, uh, Marlon Humphrey, who runs them out of play. Humphrey allows a gain of 11, and that defense out to the 46. Another Cleveland first down. Well, Kevin, that's huge news that Melanie just gave us with, with no it David is. Njoku, no Pharaoh Brown. The Browns' fourth most use of double tight ends or more as Nick Chubb gets going on another big run. There he goes, and Froholt will push him for another yard and another gain of 11. So he's had gains of 10, 11, and 11 on the ground, and just like that, they're inside the 42 of Baltimore. Nick Chubb. Well, and it looks like Stone maybe. No, nope. who is that? Is that uh, Josh Bynes? Bynes, that's down for the Ravens. So Bynes is down. Yeah, you're losing to Joku, who is having a big day with seven catches. And clock operator to set the game clock to 1026. 71 with Bynes down. Clock will be reset with a 10-point Baltimore lead. Well, and, and you have to remember, Cleveland uses multiple tight ends, the fourth most in the NFL, but they also use offensive linemen. They don't have they don't have Wyatt Teller, so Yelda Froholt is now the starting guard, and many times he's used as a fullback, and they'll put Dunn in as that extra tight end, but now you're down two tight ends. You're down one of your linemen. That takes away a big part of your offense, or at least that running attack that they'd like to use bigs in there with. Bynes is still down. He's been a starter each game. And we know this defense in the fourth quarter has allowed the second most points in the NFL, second most to Cleveland, <laughs> to Cleveland which has allowed yes, the so, most in the so NFL. Don't even, it's a 10-point yeah, game. Don't, don't it. change the channel. Josh Bynes, you see there, 6'1", 235. He has an interception and a sack on the season. We'll step aside. Go to NFLshop.com for a special offer. Wrapping the left calf of Josh Bynes. Browns on this drive. Three rushes for 34 yards. Brissett for 10. Chubb for 11 and 12. First and 10. 41 of Baltimore. Conklin the block. On a knee. It's caught by Cooper who gets down with a grab by Peters of 11 yards to the 30 and another first down for Cleveland. This is just Cooper Matter just going. He's up at the top of your screen. It's just a curl route. You're right. You go up, you push it like you're going to go deep. Doesn't need to come back to the ball. Would have been nice if he came back to the ball. But instead, he secures the catch and picks up the first down. Chubb. Good looking block by Batonio. That opens the door. Here comes Chubb inside the 10. Stone and Clark had to make sure he was out. What a run to the nine. 21 yard pickup for Chubb. And it's first and goal to go, the Browns. Posick and, but and Petonio are going to lead out in front of Chubb. They're the ones that get that kickout block of Hamilton, which allows them to get around to the edge. Hunt is in, first and goal, down by 10, fourth quarter. Hunt, Petonio a block, Brian a block, diving to the two. Kareem Hunt. Gain of six, second down and goal. When you see him stretch that, you see how he bounced and like tried to get around it. A lot of times the pursuit is able to get you and you're not able to pick up the yardage that he did. Excellent effort by Hunt. Second down goal, blocked by Posick and a touchdown for Kareem Hunt from two yards away. Posick with the block and the Browns have gotten on the board again on their second touchdown run of the day. This time by Hunt. First off the block by Chubb. And the Browns are back in business. This is going to be a stretch play to the right. But then Campbell gets up the field. That causes Hunt to cut it back. And then he sees a crease off of Batonio and is able to get into the end zone. When I saw him cut back, I thought he was going to run into a pile. But that block by Batonio allowed him to crease into the end zone. And the extra point, York, did you, good. Did you see that bounce back? I did. That ball, like, skipped and rolled. Excellent job holding that. Hewlett is the long snapper, but this was the play. Posick opens the door, and then submarining for six is Hunt. Wanted. Full-time fans. Full-time fans with a fighting spirit. And by Verizon, the network America relies on. 
Ravens have dominated this rivalry, winning 34 of the 46 meetings, including four of the last five. Extra point, good by York, but the hold by Bajorquez was really something on a bad long snap, and this kickoff is in and out of the end zone. Close as it's been since late in the first half. Watch it again, Hewitt with the long snap. Very seldom do you highlight the holder, but this is basically one of the best holds you will ever see. The fact that Charlie Hewlett skipped that ball back to him, and Hewlett is still in his stance. He stayed in his stance the whole time, so I'm not sure what happened on that end of it, but they work as a unit. Bajorque has recovered for him, got the ball down, and keeps this a three-point game. And that was one of the problems with Bajorque that came out of Green Bay when he was let go. They said he was not a very good holder. Mason Crosby was having troubles. Anyway, he's with Cleveland. Redeems himself right there. It's first and 10 after the kickoff, 25. Stanley the block, and it goes underneath, and Bateman will dive to the 32, hit by Phillips, and brought down there on a gain of seven for Baltimore. Well, and this is the exact thing we talk to the players about. We talk to every player we talk to and, and to John Harbaugh. What happens in the fourth quarter? What do you have to do in the fourth quarter? He said, you just need to relax. We just need to play our game. We don't need to press. We don't try too hard. Drake on second down and three runs to the side. Ushered over there by a couple, including Emerson. And uh, they'll spot the ball at about the 34 and a gain of two. And uh, here are the finishing things we talked about. Well, and, and that's why they just have to finish. There's like just, you know, don't get it mental. It's easier said than done, right? Don't make it mental. But when you look at all of these different things that are highlighted, six giveaways in the fourth quarter, point differential, blown leads, it's just human nature, right, that it starts creeping in. So until you can go out and finish a ball game like they're trying to get done here today against Cleveland, Third and one. Brown's very good at stopping third and one. And they sent Edwards over the strong side with both McCary and Stanley in the game on that left side to lead the way. They do give him the first. He gets to the 35. And a first down, they keep it alive. And all you have to do is touch that 35 because of the... There it is. It's easily over the 35-yard line. And I'd say I know they gave it to him, but the spot actually could be a little bit further based on where we just saw, saw the ball fall. Phillips makes the stop. Justice Hill is the back for Jackson. First and ten. Duvernay blocked by Ricard. Blocked over there by Andrews. Out of bounds he goes. And again, it's Phillips ushering him out of play. He's got the first down just beyond the 45. And a pick up a catch and run of ten. You'll watch Newsom come to the outside. He's going to try and sweep the feet, which would be a loss. But that late kick out by Ricard on Newsom allows allows Duvernay to get up the sideline. Watch right there. Newsom tries to sweep for the legs, but Ricard's able to get just enough of him not to allow that to happen. McCary is now playing the right tackle for Morgan Moses. It plays all over the joint. First and 10, and Phillips with a hit. But driving still is Gus Edwards past midfield. Gain of about four, and he is in the Browns' territory. Edwards today, 16 for 66 on the ground. And the State Farm postgame show coming up. JB and crew with scores, news, and highlights of week seven. State Farm postgame show from our CBS studios next. Second down in six. Fourth quarter clock is ticking in a three-point game. Nice slashy move by Hill, lunging ahead near the 45. Brought down by Perry and Winfrey on that line, and let's see if they get him the first. I think he's going to be shy by the length of a football. Third down. Well, and this is situational football. We all talk about it as coordinators. As you look at Joe Woods, John Harbaugh, as a head coach, you talk about situational football and, and being able to finish games and, and when the when the game's on the line you know that you talk about four minute offense i know we're way more than four minutes with just under six minutes but still it's keeping that clock ticking getting first down sustaining drives andrews has gone to the backfield he'll get the call on third and one pile driving his way in that is his second carry of the season it comes at a great time. He gets the first down. He picks up five, and we give you to James and Phil. Dallas gets a cushion late in the fourth. That's what they're doing, getting a little breathing room. Ezekiel Elliott, his second one-yard touchdown run 
of the day puts the Dallas Cowboys up 17 to 6 over the Detroit Lions. Back to Kevin, Trent, and Melanie. Quarterback's best friends are running game, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> well, if you can get it going and, and Dak coming back, I don't know what his stats are on the day. It looked a, uh, maybe a little bit rusty coming back, but lean on that run game if you can, like the Ravens are trying to do now. First and ten, a hill blocked by Ricard. And a block in there by Zeitler, the right guard. And they plow ahead and take it to the 36, gain of about five. And Owusu Koromo with the stop as Brissett. He's gone 17 to 20 through the year, warming up with 191. Jackson today, 9 of 16, but on the ground. Edwards for 66. Jackson himself has run for 46. Justice Hill, three carries for 19. As they got Hill and Edwards back today, losing Dobbins after last week. Ninth play of the drive, second down and five. Hill again. Looked like Elliott tried to bring him down, did with Johnson, and it's a gain of four. He's down to the 33, so each team going to the run, eating up the clock and moving the ball. Well, and if you're the Ravens, as soon as you cross midfield, you're already in field goal range, it seems like, with Justin Tucker, right? So now, all of a sudden, as you're getting closer and closer, yes, you ultimately want to get a touchdown and make this a two-possession game with under four minutes to go, but it's vital that you get a field goal at least because then you're forcing the Browns to get a touchdown as opposed to trying to get a field goal to try and tie things up. Third time on this drive, third and one. Here comes Jackson. He'll take it himself. He almost skipped by a defender, but he gets the first down. Captures well, the first I, down to the 23 and a run of 10. Well, and I just was going to say at some point in time, the Browns got to consider taking some timeouts, and they take a timeout right there because they got to try and conserve some time watch the fake handoff here to hill jackson's going to take it and go right up the middle what nearly nice, scores though with that cutback what about that nice block by zeitler my goodness and just sealing that hole as they got mccary again taking the place of the starting right tackle morgan moses but zeitler right there has had a couple nice blocks here in the second half Timeout just taken by the Browns down to two and a three-point Baltimore lead controlling the clock. And it's a 324. Well, now you got to take some more risks, right? Now, if you're Joe Woods, you got to take more risks defensively. You got to get pressure. You got to get a big stop. You can't let them get in the end zone. And you've got to maintain some time here so your offense has a chance to go down the field. Three and third and one conversions on this drive. First and ten. Hill hit by Taki Taki and Jones. Losing a yard right there, and they'll push him back to the 24. Well, and there was that pressure right there. You mentioned Taki Taki coming off of one edge. The thing you have to worry about with that, you, you, there's got to be that sense of urgency with bringing pressure. You worry about giving up the big play because you got people in man-to-man -man coverage. It's all one-on-one, -on -one, and, and even Lamar Jackson, he can take any play to the house anytime he has the ball in his hand. So... But you have to take that risk, right? You got you got to get the ball back. Get the ball back in your offense's hands. Well, a critical stretch here for the Ravens. A win would keep them atop the AFC North and improve to 2-0 in the division. With a win for the Browns, they can pull ahead of the Ravens, maybe even get ahead of the Bengals for first. But they need to split, they feel, at the very least, Cincinnati is next week. It would put them at 3-5 and five to the bye, and they'd still be breathing. That's what they told us. And here is a second and 11 from the 24. Run by Hill, dancing in there, gets by Thomas, cuts back, fumble the ball, fumble the ball, Cleveland has got it, Cleveland has gotten the ball on the fumble by Hill, and picked up by rookie Isaiah Thomas, flag thrown at the 28. Well, it's going to be a holding on the Ravens, unless this is called a fumble. It's whether or not his knee is down. Let's see if the ball comes, oh, the ball's already out. You're yeah. right, Kevin. Ozu Koromoa. Koromoa knocked one. that out. Holding offense number 65. That penalty is declined. So the plays first down Cleveland. Each team is fumbled. And Owusu Koromoa comes up with a huge play. Thomas got the ball in Cleveland. Down by three and one timeout will take over. What a huge play by the Browns defense. And, and right now, if you're the Ravens, you're like, how can this be happening again? A week ago, an interception and a fumble in the fourth quarter. Today, another fumble. Justice Hill just fumbled. Go back to last week, the loss to the Giants, 24-20. The last two possessions for Baltimore, 
interception and fumble. And they led in yards in that game. But now Cleveland has gotten it. Arushu Koromoa knocked it away. A rookie. Thomas got it. And here comes Brissett with Chubb. First and 10. Cleveland 16. And Kevin, you can still use your whole playbook. Three minutes to go. You have the two-minute warning, and you have one timeout left. So everything's at your disposal. They bring a lot of heat. And again, Jason Pierre Paul and Patrick Queen mess up that pocket. Second down and ten. They've had a great deal of success bringing pressure. Pierre Paul getting in the air, trying to get that ball out to the flat to Chubb. See no reason why they won't continue to dial up pressure because the Browns have had problems with it. Incompletion makes it second and ten. It's Chubb. There was a block in there by Froholt, and he's past the 20. And he's tackled out there by Patrick Queen at the 21 on a gain of five for the Browns. You see the clock rolling. Cleveland one timeout, Baltimore three. Chubb will leave. Hunt is in. Third and five. Oh, they get around Wills, but he's going deep, and he's got him! People's Joe just got the ball! Working on Stone. The gain is inside the 45 to the 42 of Baltimore. 38-yard completion. Well, and he got rid of that ball just in time. It's Marcus Peters that actually was aggressive at the line of scrimmage. People Jones gets around him. Stone is late coming over the top, but Stone's in the middle of the field. He's got to get all the way over there. Oof. They actually could have called a late hit. Yep. A couple extra steps. There have been uh, less hits called for penalties this season. Chubb is in. Two and a half. Fake. And it's Bryant on the shovel pass and a gain of a yard. And wrapped up in there by the rookie Kyle Hamilton. Timeout First Baltimore start, to the 41. As York awaits, he has had a game-winning kick in the opener, the rookie has. That was a Carolina from 58 yards away. That was for the win, and they got it. Coming up, the State Farm Post Game Show. JB and Company scores news and highlights all coming up in the State Farm Post Game Show from New York. Now the timeouts, Browns 1, Ravens 2. Well, and I, I would continue to think that the Ravens are going to put pressure because they don't want to allow them to get any closer for the field goal attempt. Second down and nine. And Brissett, 19 to 23, brings it in. Chased on the play by Washington down the side. He's got his receiver, and that's Bell. David Bell, the rookie out of Purdue, with the grab, picks up seven, and they'll put him just inside the 35. How about the spin move by Brissett wow. to escape that sack? Like Jackson. It's, it's, it's not something that you normally see him do. He pumps to the left, and then he gets that spin. Woo. Wow. Gets to the outside and is able to pick up a key eight yards. What a play. Third and two. Hunt is wide and now will rejoin his quarterback. Remember, no Njoku. He's out of the game. The set going deep and for Cooper. Got him! A push! They're gonna, I think they're going to get offensive pass interference. They are. Two flags at the 10 and they go on Amari Cooper of Cleveland. Well, and this is critical because now all of a sudden it takes you back and it affects your field goal range. At the top of your screen, banging back and forth, but it's right there. That left arm of Cooper extends out at the end, right there, pushes away, gets separation. With Marcus Peters right with the terrific, talented Amari Cooper. And the crazy thing is, Kevin, he didn't even need to do that. Right. There were, the throw was far enough ahead. I don't think Coop, I don't think uh, Peters was able to recover to be able to get that. But now this is a critical down because you got to get, you got to get some yardage just to have a field goal attempt. Third and 12 with Hunt in the backfield by Brissett. 
Conklin the block. Oh, they get by Wills, and again he escapes. He's a magician. Look at him go inside the 40. How did he get away? Unbelievable. Chased by Owe. A run right there. He picks up six on third and 12. <laughs> it's fourth and six. It's one thing earlier to get away from Broderick Washington, but, but to this. get away from Justin Houston. Wills doesn't give up on the play. He comes back and gets Houston and Owe with the hustle. Here now for the tie. The ball at the 46, a 56-yard try to tie it for Cade York, a rookie out of LSU. He missed one against the Chargers earlier from 54 that cost him. Flag. Oh. I think the Ravens are offside. That's going to give him five extra yards. And these have been some of the problems. He's pre-snap. Unless they say he, unless they say Hewlett flexed the ball or something and tried. The Ravens are all yelling that somebody up front for the Browns, which if it is on the Browns, that takes them. I, I don't think they can try the field. Do you think, Kevin? Well, from if this. If it's on the Browns, it would the, be six the, over 60 the, yards. But this direction. Kicker, yes, in this direction, this kicker hit one from 62 in pregame warmups. And now they are discussing. And remember, it was Hewlett who had the bad long snap on the extra point. Well, five yards would make it a 61-yard kick. Yes. So. And if it's the other way, it was fourth and five. It'll be very close. It's a big, big, big decision. Call. Yes, it is. False start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Who they called on Dunn? Well, they say Let's see if we can see Dunn. it. Let's see. I, wow, looked like I it was a chain reaction. Oh. I don't see anybody move for the Browns there. On the right side where the jump happens? First of all, 68 isn't over there anywhere. He's not on that right side of the line. So now, York, who is hitting in pregame from 62, is going to try a 60-yard field goal to tie the game. Well, and they normally go to eight yards when they put the hold down. They've actually gone to just under eight yards about seven and a half yards they've moved up a little bit closer to be right at the 50 yard line for the tie no York has had it deflected. Let's see who got it. It may have been Malik Harrison. We will look at it again. Nonetheless, the Ravens are holding a three-point lead at the two-minute warning. Get more done. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Well, a lot going on here. The 60-yard field goal they are ruling now officially was deflected, blocked by Harrison on the kick by York from 60. But it got that far because there was a penalty on the offensive line, the, the field goal unit line. But we've looked at it, and we're going to have Gene Steratore come coming after the play here and see if he can join us to reassess because it was... It was it's close. critical. I mean, that, I mean that's, it's, it's that's a huge. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. And here comes Drake, who loses two. Kenyon Drake shot back. Taven Bryan in there, and a timeout taken by Cleveland. Let's watch it again. Second down and twelve. Come on, this is the penalty now. Charlie Hewlett, the center, drops his head to look to snap, and Calais Campbell jumps. He's the first one to move. And I know they said 68. 68 isn't even on the right side of the offensive line. The, the snapper is allowed to look down. And Gene, what did you think? You're right there, Trent. I mean, what you look for in some of those situations is if that head moves up, as you alluded, this one goes down. But if it moves up in an abrupt fashion, the center, then they'll consider that to be a false start. As far as the left guard moving, when the center looks down, and I don't think it's abrupt in my opinion, it's him just looking to recheck where he's going to shoot the ball to the holder. When the defense jumps in that neutral zone, 
the left guard does move, which is two spots away from where the defense encroached in the neutral zone. So that would be a false start because he's not directly over top or within a space and a half of where the defense impeded the neutral zone. I didn't get to hear the number, guys. If they called it on 68, it's because 68 moved after the defense was in the neutral zone, and 68 is more than one and a half positions away from away. the defensive that player that's huge. in that area. Interesting, yeah. But if the guy, if the guy, I mean, Calais Campbell and then and Washington was was followed him up. I mean, they're way over the line, but you're saying because he's on the other line, the other side of the line of scrimmage, they're calling it on offense, even though you clearly see the Ravens across first. Yes, you do. And then you see 71 lift too, Trent. But right, I think 71 right. lifts after the left side of the line flinches. Correct. So you can't count the 71 movement. Wow. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Gene. Thanks for that yeah, clarification. Gene, there's a, yeah, lot, that's... a lot there to digest. Uh, Jackson had a three-yard run. Third and nine. Cleveland out of timeouts. Baltimore just took one. They've got one left. And you see our time. You see our score. And the Ravens are at the 49 of the Browns. Browns again out of timeouts. And here are some of the numbers with this game. Chubb caught fire in the second half. Edwards comes back after being a year away. There was a forced fumble. Cleveland had a forced fumble on the running back, Justice Hill, and they set up for a field goal and then a penalty moved it from 55 yard to 60 yards. And the 60 yarder was partially blocked by a linebacker, Harrison. And a handoff. On third down to Drake and stymied shy of midfield on that third and nine. There is no gain. The clock will continue to tick. Cleveland out of timeouts. Browns coming in for the folks that have just joined us have watched three in a row have come back. At one time, Baltimore had scored 17 unanswered points. Now, Brissett has had a good day, 20 at 24. They can run the clock here to about 25 seconds. Baltimore is setting to punt with a three-point lead. And the punter is a rookie, Jordan Stout. And the timeout taken there at 24 seconds. And now Baltimore is without a timeout. So if you've just joined us, here is how things got underway. A knockaway right there by Justin Houston. Here comes Hunt with a touchdown run, which brought the game to within three. Justice Hill fumbled. The Browns moved downfield, and that 60-yard field goal partially blocked by linebacker Malik Harrison. After, there was a penalty of five yards on the Browns, which moved the ball from about 55-yard drive to a 60-yard drive. Well, there's two trains of thought here. Set up a return or go after the block. I think you have to go after the block here. If you don't get it, you need to try and get as many yards as you can and get down, give your offense some time. Punt is away by Stout the rookie. Peoples-Jones. With a hit and the ball in the end zone. Touchback to the 20. Great play by Peoples-Jones. Because that gets him now. It gives him some field position. And if he allows that ball to be downed inside the one, it's over. Smart play by Peoples Jones. 16 seconds left for the Browns. Well, now you have to get out of bounds. You, you need to just try and get it as close to midfield as you can so that you can take a shot for a Hail Mary at the end. Najoku is out. He is the pass catching tight end. He had seven catches today, but he is out now and injured. Hunt is the back. And Brissett with a first and ten and no timeouts. Michael Woods is in motion. Brissett. And it goes to Peoples-Jones. And out of bounds and forced over there by Peters. He picks up three. He gets to the 23 and four seconds off the clock. And we're down to 12. Yeah, that's not going to do anything. Nope. Get, getting, getting a couple yards in, in, in a few seconds, that's... You've got to get chunks here, and I and I know it's not. The odds are really slim. The 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 chances you're going to throw an interception are there. You but you've got to push it up the field, get out of bounds, take a chance. Maybe you get a 
defensive pass interference. Second down and seven. Batoni will block with Wills. Bang time for Brissett and over the head of Peoples Jones. And Peters is over there covering him on this side. So he is traveling. It's incomplete. Seven seconds to go. Third and seven for the Browns, who were down earlier in this half, 20 to 10. Well, now it's going to even be hard to get two plays off because if you try and push it up the field, get a 20, 25 yard gain and get out of bounds in seven seconds, that's tough to do. So this could be the last play here for Cleveland to try and get this done. Third and seven. No timeouts and seven seconds to go. It's Brissett. And he goes down the middle and it's caught by Peoples Jones and knocked away on the play and a fumble in Geno Stone. We'll close the door, and Baltimore has survived and beaten Cleveland 23 to 20. What a heck of a football game, Kevin. Both these teams fighting, trying to get things turned around, get their season going. Baltimore able to hang on here. Geno Stone continuing to play, knocking the ball loose. Watch it punch it out and recover it. The clock would have run out anyway. The Ravens now are atop the AFC North. They stay there and improve to 2-0 in the division. They go to 4-3 and three and are in first. The Browns have lost four in a row. Now they take on Cincinnati next week in what proves to be a very important game. All right, the final is in, 23-20 Baltimore. For Trent Green, Melanie Collins, and Gene Sterator, Kevin Harlan saying good night from Baltimore. We'll take you back to our New York studios for all the scores and highlights right after this on CBS.